Greetings viewers. Welcome to another video courtesy of me, Adventure Link. That's me. Why? Because that's my channel. Welcome aboard. Glad you're here. Glad you're watching. For today's video, we are going to be working on a 2006 Dodge Grand Caravan with the SXT package. Yes, we can actually see the SXT this time. Additionally, as you can see, it has a 3.8 liter V6 engine. And what we are doing today is we are going to take off this throttle body right there so you can clean it out. This should apply to everything up until 2007, as well as with the various engines that are offered on the Grand Caravans and Caravans, and pretty much all Chrysler minivans as a whole. The four-cylinder ones might be a little different though. As for a quick background on the throttle body, as you can see, it's this metal thing that sits right there. As you can see also, it sits you know, in between the intake manifold and the air box and the, air box and the tube. And there's a throttle plate inside that acts as a way gate for all the air to pass through. When you open this throttle up right here, normally you would use the accelerator pedal to open it up. I say at the 2007 is because, as you can see, this appears to be a mechanical, yeah, mechanical throttle with cables. And I'm guessing with the 08 and current Chrysler minivan family production, they switched it over to drive-by-wire family. And what I don't get is why, why even the Ford Panthers, as old and dinosaur and stone agey as they are, even those got DBW and 05, yet they waited till 08 to put it in these Chrysler minivans. Whatever. But of course, you know, if you get like other issues, drivability and running issues, like if you start the engine up, boom, and then it dies. Or if you get random stall outs, that could be your idle air control valve gunking up or going bad. Most of the time though you can clean out that valve in the passages and then it'll work it and then it'll work as it should. Additionally, if you get like random RPM surges, like if you stop at a stop sign or whatever and it goes boom and surges at 2000, turn it off and then turn the car back on and then it goes back to normal. That's a TP a TPS or throttle position sensor issue. Not to be confused with TPMS, which is the tire pressure monitoring system. Of course, if you also get a sticky throttle or a gunked up throttle or it's stuck, then this would be the place to be to try and service it. If nothing else, in my opinion, you should clean these things out at least every couple years as preventative maintenance. With that being said, the first thing you can do is remove this tube from the air box that goes to the engine. Next thing you want to do is, re is loosen up these hose clamps here and here. It's an 8 millimeter screw, or you can use a flat-headed screwdriver. Loosen these hose clamps up now. Next thing you want to do is pop open these clamps that go to the air box. One there. And there's one right over here. And from here, you should be able to pop the air, move the air box just like so. Get to the air filter, and then there are intake tube just fell apart here. <laughs> so... And of course, if you're in here to do the throttle body, as you can see, my air filter is kind of dirty. So you may want to consider doing your air filter while you're doing the throttle body as well. But in any case, you've got this, you still got to get this 10 millimeter bolt out of the way. So go ahead and do that now. Next thing you want to do is remove this electrical connector that goes to the air sensor. I'm not sure if this is a MAF sensor or mass airflow sensor or if this is just a standard air intake sensor like you know like it is on Saturn's or if it's MAF like pretty much everything else that should be on the road made in this millennium. But in any case you pull up this electrical pull up that tab then there's a button back here push down and hold off she comes. Next thing you want to do is get the air this half of the air box out of the way. It's got a flight with it. Out it comes. Of course, if you haven't already done so, please do remove the intake tubing from your vehicle. And if it gets caught up on this hose here, then of course you want to free it from that hose and get it out of there so you don't break it. Next thing you want to do is, as you can see, after moving the air box and stuff out of the way, you want to find a way to restrain the throttle to where it's fully opened and then remove the throttle cables. Let me see if I can get in from this angle here that'll show me show you better. You simply take this back, then there's a groove under here where you can fight with it. There's one side. Then you do the same for the other side. Now she comes. Next thing you want to do is open is loosen these three 10 millimeter head bolts. There's one there, one just right there, 
and one right there where my finger is you had to feel around for it but it's back there as far as I know there's only three screws that hold it in there I tried it with a, with a quarter inch ratchet it worked but if you need a 3 8 inch you know have at it remove the screws now yay there goes a Ninja Turtles ice cream man on the ice cream truck if only I had three bucks that'd be great but on that side note over let's get to the back to the throttle body as you can see after eight technically almost nine years and over 79,000 miles this thing's pretty gunky but we still got some more work to do first thing you want to do is remove this hose here that goes to the evap system I believe this would go to the purge solenoid you want to remove that Additionally, you want to take this electrical connector off up here. I can angle this thing. Yeah, it's pretty much the same deal as like on the airbox. Pull up that tab, and then find the button, pull it down, and then out she comes. Of course, you also want to remove this electrical connector. Um, just as a fair warning, this one is an absolute pain to get out. What I did was I ended up using a big fat screwdriver. Right, a big fat screwdriver looks like this. Wedged it like right along inside here, pushed it in, and then pushed it out with my hand. In any case, we have a throttle body. Woohoo! It's out. Now it's time to take these sensors off up here and get this thing ready for cleaning. Okay, so with the throttle body here on my uh on my little bench thingy here. Um, we still got a couple more things to take off. You know, we got the uh, throttle position sensor here, and there's your idle air control valve. I can tell which is which because a throttle position sensor has three leads to it because it's basically a potentiometer, and I'll put up a picture on how a potentiometer is set up. But in any case, these all appear to be Torx heads. From my testing, it was a T25 head, but just as a fair warning though, the thing about Torx is that there's this high maintenance bull crap in it where if you think you have the right size, think again. Because at the very least, this, right, right, this can happen to your Torx head, your Torx head socket, if not stripping out one of these Torx heads here. So with that being said, go ahead and take out all three of these Torx heads now. Now for sensor removal, um, this sensor here, you know, your throttle position sensor, just goes in like this. And I had to line it up like this to the bolt holes when you get it in and out. So keep that in mind. You can also see the little red part down there where it aligns onto this tab here. As for the idle air control valve, just as a fair warning, this thing can be a pain to get out of and you'll have to wrestle it out of there. So you're going to need the old persuader here to try and get in between here so that way you can eventually pop it out. Keep in mind too the bolt orientations, the longer bolts are for your throttle position sensor, the two longer bolts are, the shorter one is for the idle air control valve. And now it's finally time to start cleaning the throttle body. Um, as you can see here I got this gum out carb cleaner. This is not what I normally use. I normally use like Valvoline or something. But I mainly got this because I had to diagnose a potential vacuum leaf on my old Saturn. Which I don't have that anymore but this should work all the same. You want to spray it in your throttle body. As you can see the jet should be sufficient to get out most of the gunk. If it doesn't get it out you may want to have better luck with a paintbrush or something. So that way you can get the paintbrush in and go over your idle air control valve or not the idle air control valve but the throttle body don't forget to also nail inside this passage here for the idle air control valve though of course you want to nail the idle air control valve itself and of course you want to keep on having at you with this until this thing is all nice and shiny clean just so you know when I clean throttle bodies I personally go through at least half a can of this carb cleaner here so don't be surprised if you also take up a half a can of carb cleaner. You also want to manipulate the throttle down here so that way you can move the throttle plate so that way you can get inside inside here better. 
so go on ahead and have at you with the carb cleaner now. Now with the throttle body all nice and shiny, don't forget to go over it with a can of brake clean here because carb cleaner usually leaves a filmy deposit in and that can affect things so make sure you do nail your throttle body and your idle air control valve with some brake clean before reassembling. That orange piece is your throttle body gasket. Um, most of the time these things should be fine but if you were getting vacuum leaks in regards to this gasket and or if you see damage to it like dried up or cracks or missing pieces or whatever then I would consider replacing that as well. But with that being said, from here, after you get it all cleaned out and we check the gasket, reverse of removal is your installation. That's it. You're all done. So that's all there is to cleaning out the throttle body and extracting the various sensors on it on your 2006 Dodge Grand Caravan SXT with the 3.8 liter V6 engine, although this should work with the other Chrysler minivan family as a whole, as well as the other various engines that was offered. Anyways, I am Adventure Link. I uh, just want to say thank you again for watching. I appreciate your watching my videos. Hopefully you got something from this video and hope you learned something from it. Hope this video led you to a successful diagnosis or repair. And with that being said, you want to know what I also appreciate? Your rates and subscriptions. You can do it down in the video description of each and every video on YouTube. The buttons are there. Mine are no exception. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, praise, criticisms, well wishes, prayers, etc., but no flames, fighting, spam, baiting, or other such bullcrap, I would ask that you take it down in the comments section. If you have any questions about the Chrysler minivans as a whole, which covers things from Chrysler, Dodge, and Plymouth, then head up the Chrysler Minivan Fan Club Forum, or you can join up the Chrysler and Dodge Minivan Owners Group on Facebook. Search the groups, post your questions, join up, and the fine folks at either medium will answer your questions for you in a timely manner. Starting to get warm outside, so stay cool, stay hydrated, eat right, stay healthy, stay in the shade, don't let others push you around. And this is Adventure Link signing off with the wise words of wisdom from Eric the Car Guy, reminding you guys and gals to be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. Work hard, have fun, make history. Have a nice day. Until next time, catch you on the flip side.